Hello, this is String Guy here. Today's this review is going to be it's going to be a mini review about a guitar and also a brief talk about scale length, and you'll find out why I'm going to talk about scale length in this review. But I'm going to be reviewing my Seagull Entourage that I just recently bought and uh, I bought it used. I do use reviews on guitar instruments I bought simply because sometimes it's an instrument I did not find a lot of information about on the internet and and some other people might be looking for them used and I want to help them. Now I'm not going to get into my things to look for on, a, on any used guitar on this review uh, simply because I have a separate one. I'll put the link to it in, in the description so in case you're looking for some tips on buying a used guitar there's definitely some things you want to do uh, as a new purchaser and I cover those things that so you don't have to be a super technician to pick out a good used guitar but I give a couple practical tips on that review so you might want to check that review out so you know how to purchase a good be better informed when you're making a used guitar purchase uh, this guitar I purchased um, I was looking for there was a gap in my guitar arsenal I did not have a dreadnought guitar uh, my Fender Montera is sort of dreadnought shaped size, but it's a thin body, it's not a thin body, so it doesn't have that dreadnought sound. And all my other guitars, I have like my Ibanez AL30 SE, which is based on the Gibson Jumbo, the EC200, well, J200, most people know, but the EC200 is just electric cutaway. It's a J200 with a cutaway and my things on. But, anyways, that's a super jumbo. And my other guitar, and then I have my parlor guitar which is small size narrow waist so i did not have a uh, dreadnought and dreadnoughts just have a certain sound to them and i wanted that sound they don't none of my all my guitars have great sound don't get wrong but it's more a mid-range to upper range they didn't just have that deeper growl that you find um and i went for the seagull I'll be honest with you, the other guitars that had the deep bass growl that I've ever ran into are Martins. And I, I did not find any Martins in my price range. But this came close, and this was sort of like what I was looking for, close to the sound. And the, the other thing I liked about the Seagull was it had a cedar top. So uh, all my other acoustics have uh, Sitka Spruce, except for my uh, uh, classical guitar. I do have a classical Dixon that has a cedar top. But for the most part, everything I have is, and cedar has a different sound, a warmer sound. So uh, I wanted to go with that. And I uh, will cover a little bit. This was also a different scale length, 15.84, closer to close to the Gibson scale length of 15.75. Now, not all Gibsons use a 15.75. For example, the J200 is not 15.75, or yeah, 25 point, sorry, 25 point, 24.75 it it's a 25.5 most guitars have a 25.5 or 25.4 my recording king has a 24.2 um but this was close to that scale like it gives it the classic two elect uh acoustics with the 24.75 would be like the j45 and the hummingbird uh so uh so but it was close to that that was another thing i had Influence it plus the cedar top, but a big thing that influenced me in buying it was the fact that it was a, a seagull. Seagull is one of the Godin family of instruments. I'm not a paid endorser or anything, but Godin was originally, I think his name is Robert, Robert Godin from uh, Canada, and they have se several factories. And it seems like each of their brand names is because they have different plants where they're assembled. The they have some of their brand names of their different models. That like they have the Seagull, then they have uh, Simon and Patrick, Art and Luthery, Norman, and La Petri, and which is just their classicals, and then Godin, which also has electric guitars. I don't know if any of their brands. Godin's the only one I know of of those names that have electric guitars. It could, I'm not an expert in all the Godin, but I've heard enough of them to know that they're one of the best kept secrets. Sea, especially seagulls. Uh, seagulls are made in La Patrie or La Patre. I'm not sure. 
exactly how it's pronounced, L-A, then P-A-T-R-I-E, capital P-A-T-R-I-E, two words, La Patrie. Um, it's in Quebec. I have not been in Quebec, Canada. I've been in Ontario that, uh, province many times for my previous jobs. I used to go to there a lot. But they're made in Canada, and they have the different plants where they're assembled. Then you think about all the golden instruments. Golden is very eco-friendly. Most of the wood is harvested in Canada, uh, but the only wood they use that's not is the fingerboard wood. That, like if it's Indian rosewood like this one, the picture has, that would be imported. But everything else, the cedar and the spruce, and this guitar has cherry back and sides. Now it's a lam three layer laminate, but it's, but it's only three layers compared to some other places, which is more like plywood, but it's cherry. They use a lot of, and then and the neck is silver, silver leaf maple. Uh, so those are all woods from Canada and, and done from sustainable forests. In fact, uh, I was reading um, Godin, none of the trees were sawed down to cut it. They took all trees that were already down, that had fallen, nature knocked them down from wind or whatever, took them down. So they have been so far been able to source where they're not, cutting they have not cut any trees so now some people say yeah but if you left a rod it could help the forest i don't know that that's that big a deal because there's still plenty of branches that fall and there's still plenty i think that's getting too hardcore that hope oh, you pick up those so it's laying there uh, uh, but i but i think that's being very responsible there uh they're a very resp responsible uh company so but i didn't buy it because the eco things but However they do it, they've been able to control the price very good. Maybe because of the way they're getting the wood, it's keeping the cost way down. But, or the labor's reasonable price in Quebec, I don't know. But all I can tell you is every reviewer, and not just me, everybody I've talked to that has a Seagull or has an Art New 3, they tell you they punch above their weight. By that, we I mean if you take one of their whatever price range, it will compare to one that's either 50% 50, 50 to double the price of that. It will compare completely in sound quality and playability and construction. They, I don't know how they do it at the prices they do, but um, and their quality control is really spotless. Because I was reading about how their serial numbers work. They have a serial number and they will put in there if it was a second. They must not let anything out of the factory that is not a first because I have come from an engineering background. I can tell you from having looked closely inside and all over this thing, this thing left that factory with zero flaws. And I'm hearing the same thing from other Seagull buyers. You could not go wrong with a brand new one. I won't tell you what I paid for this because my philosophy is I don't tell you the price because of different factors why I might have gotten a special deal. But... This guitar, when it's sold new, now they give their list price, but I have noticed sometimes Seagulls run sales on it. Now this one is called the Rustic Burst. It's no longer made. Now they have an Autumn Burst. And when they did the Rustic Burst, they did it with a cedar top. But everything else is the same now. Right now it's only sold, this particular guitar is only sold an Autumn Burst. The Entourage is only an Autumn Burst with a spruce top. And that right now sells for over 600 they have, they have on sale. They list them at 800 This guitar probably sold no less than $650, maximum $800. I, you can, I cannot get an exact age on it. The person I bought it from bought it from someone else. So there were at least two owners prior to me owning it. But from what I could see on the internet, and the serial number is a 12-digit, Godin went, uh, or uh, Seagull went to 12-digit serial number in 2008, so the oldest this could be is 13 years old, but probably not, probably less than 10 years old. Um, I don't think the Entourage has been around that long. Um, but the Entourage is a very nice guitar. Uh, it comes in model. does not have a cutaway. It's a little cheaper. But this one it comes with the cutaway and the, the Godin QT or QIT, I think it is, QTI, uh, I'd have to look at the documentation again. Uh, sound system, uh, very nice, very tidy. Uh, 
small battery tra tray at the back, where it, which you know, this is the first time I tried to take the battery out of. Okay, one nine volt battery. So I know I need to have a nine volt spare. There's one nine volt battery. It also does a good job as a tuner. But I'll be honest with you, I, I still like to use a clip on tuner because I'm just used to looking up there by my hands when I'm tuning. So I still use my snark. But it's nice to know that if I forget to get my snark tuner, I got my tuner here. I tried it and it tunes good. Um, so this. These guitars are very nice guitars. They come with a tusk bridge and saddle, but um, this one, yeah. Um, so uh, the strings, he did replace them once with the, the Dario strings, but I'm pretty sure it came with the Dario strings. The bracing on it, it's an X bracing. It looks to me like a forward shift X bracing. And, um, but it's very solid construction. This one's a solid top. I definitely wanted a solid top. It's not all solid, but the difference between solid, the sound of solid top versus a solid, all solid, is minor compared to the difference between a solid top and a laminate. Um, yeah, you do get a little bit better, but the thing is, the price jump when you go to an all solid guitar jumps considerable no matter who you look at. And they do make all solids, but um, the this is a, a like I said, only a three ply um, cherry, and uh, it uses Dota makes their own tuners. They seem to be a very quality tuner. Uh, I have it's been holding tune pretty good for me since I got it. Um, so I was very impressed by it. Uh, there was only two things that took a little bit to get used to. I did mention it's a little bit shorter scale length, which is fine because my recording king here is 24.2, which means it takes less pressure to press it, but it also means less spread on your fingers. I measured like on my Ibanez and some of my other 25.5 scale length guitars. If I measured from the nut, inside the nut, down to the top edge of the fourth fret I get four inches on those. If I go to here on the, on the seagull I get a sixteenth short of that. Three and fifteen sixteenths. On my parlor I get three and seven eighths. It's an eighth inch short. You might say well what's the difference? That? Well if you're, to, if you're playing a, a C chord for example where you got a good spread across those three frets it's a sixteenth inch less down to that bottom. So if you're having problems where when you spread to do the C which I had when I first started, and you get too close to that, to the second fret, and you get poor sound because you're close to that. Well, guess what? You jump on this guitar, you get a little more space there. It's just using the normal hand space again. You, you get a little more space there, and you get a cleaner sounding C. So in that regard, you get a little less spread, you know, for some of those chords. And if you're going like an F chord, the full F, and you get those spreads. Now, one little difference, though, but it only took a day or so to get used to it. The difference in the nut width. Most of my other guitars are an inch 11 sixteenths nut width, which or 1.687. My Fender Telecaster, or not Fender, my Squire Telecaster, it has 1.65, it's 42 millimeter. So it's a little narrow. But this is 1.72. So that's 33 thousandths more or basic or 32,000 basically a 30 second an inch because that 30 second an inch is 32.5 32.5 you know so basically a 30 seconds wider so that would mean this difference between springs are five and a half thousandths wider not not a great bit but you can notice it but is that wide from guitars no because most guitar most martins are 1.75 one and three quarters. So that's a 30 second more than this. And there's even some Martins with 1.875 and 1.812, you know, and, and I'm not picking Martin just because they're one of the more, you know, they're, they've been around the longest of all the acoustics. So they're pretty much like the standard setter on, on things. So, so if I was going to go to Martin, I would have to adjust even more in width. But 
you can get some Martins with one point seven two. I think you might even be able to find one or two Martins with one in loud sixties. But I'm saying the vast majority of the Martins, it's it's a one point seven five. So, anyways, one point seven two. Yes, I noticed it the first time I played it, and the first two times, but you quickly get it just just a day. But then again, it's compensated by the twenty four point eight seven. Scale length, 24.84 scale length, so it's a little longer. Just a tad longer than the Gibson scale length, because I was intrigued about the Gibson scale length. Because of, well, not intrigued, because I have a a clone of a Gibson ES335 that has a 24.75. And when I play it, I really liked that spacing. It really helped me with guitars. With that, getting a nice chord. My C chord was much better on that. So, so having said that, but this was my first with a little bit narrower, a little bit wider, not, but it was not drastically wider. So it was a slight change in playing. But I'll play a little bit here just so you can get an idea of the sound of this guitar. And I'm not a great guitar player, and especially when I'm playing recorded. Okay, Grant, I made some mistakes there. I get nervous when I play in front of you, but I think you heard the sounds. Uh, let me just strum a full few full chords. Here's a G. So I'm going to play the full G. <laughs> Okay. 
give you a, an idea of the sound of it. It's a nice guitar. I like playing it. I, I've only had it for a few days now, but I'm enjoying it more and more and more each day. And uh, so, but again, I cannot recommend the Seagull more than enough. Enough. They are great guitars, great value. You will, you will not be disappointed. They're forever guitars. Meaning, if you're short of a pro, you will probably get all the quality. I, I doubt I will ever buy. I have to buy another dreadnought now. This quality, this is more than enough quality that I need for my playing ability. I just wanted to, re, you know, a, a dreadnought. So the only way I would buy another dreadnought is if I just got such a good deal on it that I couldn't turn it down. And even then, I'd probably just get it and give it to somebody. I, I do a lot of finding good permanent, good homes for guitars with young players. So anyways, I just wanted to do that review. And this is the string guy. I just hope you have a great holiday. And uh, I uh, just hope you enjoy your musical journey. And I hope I can help some of those beginners who start now who, who don't know. People like who were like me, find, trying to find your way through. Because I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of guitar snobs out there that really don't almost despise beginners. And they only accept you when once you've reached their level and they're not mentoring people. And and there's a lot of people out there, their videos are tended for people for their long and they or they talk down to people and go, I'm in the same boat most of you are, or maybe I'm a little further along that journey than you are. And I'm just trying to help people along the journey with the th things I've learned so that they can avoid some of the mistakes I've made and help them along their journey. Again, String Guy, you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.